remember getting on the, the plane on the way home and seeing the manager sprawled out on the chair, look dishevelled. Big club, this, isn't it? That's what he said to me. Yeah. And I thought, Ooh. I think he's got to look at who's around him. The reason I left to go to Leeds was because it was out of London and the external people around me I needed to get away from. We'd have been the greatest team of all time if we'd beaten Barcelona in them two games. Messi didn't even really have a massive plan for him. Should have. Should have done. Should have. <laughs> Should have. I felt sorry for David Moyes. I think anyone who come in there is an impossible mm -hmm. job. After Klopp now. Yeah. He's at Newcastle at the end of his career, coming in at half time and he just shouted, he'll give us one. Yeah. Rio will give us one. I remember hearing you two in the shower going, that's a point game there. Where are those people that the newcomers are looking to to get those little mm. little nuggets? They're not there Mentioning at the Mentioning them two in the shower and then little nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> Rio, thank you for coming. You look, you're looking cool, Rio. Oh, cheers, mate. It's nice. Very impressive. You're looking cool, though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're, you're, you're in seat cool. in a corduroy jacket. Yeah, 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 Item of clothing in the world no, the represent 247 pant. Yeah, yeah. Everyone must what? have a pair. What? You got a pair? What? I'll get me the bigger size, though. <laughs> 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 it's 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 awesome. Is that the 247 pant? It's making them look quite good. It's, honestly, it's unbelievable. It's the best pant in the world. You should you. never wear trousers that have got pockets on the outside. You know, that, yeah. that's, that's a no. Yeah, you wear that for walking the dogs, you put your poo bags in, you know what I mean? Your poo bags. Hey, what do you think of what's the name the manager the other day for shoving the manager? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Wow, yeah. this is it, you oh, see. Right over there, yeah, they had a bit of, yeah. of beef, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. No, right, he's made. Hey, he's <laughs> yeah. not, not the cameras, right, he's made. Where'd you say hey, on that, Joe? Just... I think, like, I do think because it was... Well, if, no, but if, last go on, go minute, on. no, last minute of the game because they were trying to use. They said, should we use a multi-ball system or a one-ball system? And at the end, with one minute ago, she's asking for a ball to be thrown on. So Jonas is like, you said, and it's like last minute of the game. And then Aaron Cuthbert said something to him. But he is very loud on the side of the pitch and can get. I think he's calmed down this season. But I just don't think she should have used the male because she was like, it's male aggression. What about the shoving? Sure. That's what I mean. So she, she shoved him? Yeah, yeah, but then she was seeing him on the side of the pitch. <coughs> but I didn't think she had to see a male. What if he shoved her? Exactly. Problems. You know the problem? You know the, when, you look at, you, when you look at it, right? When you look at the, the actual <laughs> clips... Yeah, Sirius has gone... Yeah. Uh, when you talk about <laughs> yeah. 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 No, 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 no. This week goes out, you know. What are you saying? When you talk about the clips, when you look at the clips, to use, the, to use those words um, like male aggression, Look at Chris. Now, I don't know what was said with Erin Cuff when yeah. she went over to him, but if he said anything, I don't know. But if we're talking about, she totally negated everything by pushing him. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Afterwards, then not only, you know, listen, she doesn't lose. She's not used to losing, you know what I mean? So last season, she lost now twice in that competition to Arsenal. But I thought that she would have went in the dressing room and thought, you know something, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm She went in and doubled down on it mm. and came out and said that. And so it's really tough. And I was like, gosh, I can totally understand how she's feeling. She's not used to losing, but yeah. to come out of that, that could have finished him. Yeah. If we don't see those clips and we could see that, that, that can finish him. Yeah, the clips kind of told a bit of a It told a story, but we don't know what it? was said. This yeah. is the one thing, you know, I'm going to find out if he said something like, yeah. really aggressive. But I don't know if it's been building up because I think of how he is on the side. I know a few managers have done post-match interviews saying that, the way he's to the fourth official yeah. and stuff like that. But I don't know. Yeah. I, I've never been used to having a, a manager that is like that. Like, I always liked when I played, I don't know about you guys, but, like, our manager would just sit there calm because he was like, our work's been done and just go out and do what you got. I didn't like to see the manager, like, because I thought... I'm like, and once crap. he picked Jill, I'm not even joking. Once he picked me, I didn't care about him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I don't, like, even when he's talking to you, know when you go over, you might drink water and he's talking, I can't hear him. Yeah, I'm yeah, not listening. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not listening to what he's saying. I don't, I'm not bothered about what the manager's doing on the side, but, like, when you look at Jonas sometimes, he's very animated. He's very animated. Him. I feel like he's calmed down. He's calmed down. He's calmed down. He has calmed down, and it's very hard. Because Gareth Taylor, again, using that, those words, bullying. Yeah. So using those it's words a, in the women's yeah. game, bullying. Now she's saying bull male aggression. Yeah. It's not no, good. No, you're right, it's, it's, it's the word. Up, yeah. Rio, we've got some Nando's coming. You still yeah. looking after yourself? Yeah. Seat, yeah I haven't this month, though. Right. I'm training for soccer here, Dana. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, I think God. you should come and support the cause. You're you could play. I hate that. I used to. I'm not playing anymore.
every time an ex-player gets a shocking injury, like a cruciate yeah. or yeah, a rip, a t no. rip, rip their Achilles yeah. or something, you know, they're trying to chase people yeah, with yeah. it. Yeah. Do you know where so you go. the Brazilian lads who were uh, Fabio Aurelio come back to play for Liverpool legend, supposed to go back the day after or whatever. Yeah. He's still here now. I'm <laughs> What's he done? Why? He broke all his ribs. Oh, Honestly. Oh, oh, in one of them games? Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. stopped playing now. No. I'm trying to sell it to him. Who does it? Why? What do you think? Yeah, he could have scored a great goal. I don't know. I read about it this morning. But I saw scored a great goal. Have you won it? I've only done one. No, I lost all three. We need to win this. Lost all three. We need to win this. We've lost six in a row, that's why. Honestly, some of them are interested. The world just brings seed off in every year. Yeah. Yeah. We were sent to our half family twice together. I think we were I think we were nil nil at half time and we were doing all right, but then what happens you change the goalkeeper to celebrity oh, goalkeeper second half. We've got the fella. Who's the fella who just Comedian? No. no. What that was Jamie Ennis. The what's the mask thing? Oh god, um damn it. The mask damn it. The mass singer. Who, who's the host of that? Yeah, yeah Joe Dunn. Yeah. Yeah. Was that him? Yeah. Was it? Oh. Honestly. Oh. I swear it wasn't I even a save. That. It was to his foot. No, no. And he tried to kick it and he just completely missed Did it. He, he, he just smiled. Oh, no, like, hey, look, I present yeah. my singer. I get dead into it. Like, it's when I sat in That's the meeting it. and they're like, you'll be Mark and Roberto Carlos and Totty today. I'm like, no. when do you ever get that sentence? Oh, no, <laughs> Totty was still pinging it around. Do you want to play? I love Totty. No. We need a strong team. No, I can't. I won't be part of the strong team. Have you ever played? No, I can't. Tree I'm at my, the back. back. Oh, tree at the back. back hey, knees, how are you having? Uh, we concede too many. Are you, is your body <laughs> like knackered yeah. after? Have you seen his body? Yeah. Seen him training? No, no, no. No, but I, I mean, I don't run. I just go to the gym. Take your jacket up. Carol, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you've been in the gym, look. No, no, it's it's top. Top. it. He put. Uh, it, is it every morning on Instagram? Not every morning. Pumping. No, is that right? Yeah. No, no, no. Three, three times a week. Three times a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not doing nothing. Who's filming it? Who's the person who's got, who's like, he was... The geezer who trains me. Yeah. Yeah, just go bang it out, boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He wants you on Instagram, <laughs> doesn't he? Lovely. I bet. Is that it, Marie? Is that where you're going now? You're going to be doing that for as long as... Yeah, I can't run because I've got a bad back. Mm. So remember... Yeah, the, I've got the uh, pastor yeah. manager yeah. on the phone here. Yeah. Right, it's terrible. Maybe What's he, he thinks you're on the job. Huh? Right, you OK, lad? Like? What's up? Preston manager. Is yeah, all good, just with the, the overlap. Do you want to go on loud speaking with the overlap through here, or is it pretty, or is it serious or important? Oh, what's he doing? What's he, who's, Needs who's an it? investor. <laughs> the Neville's and the Keynes who want to sign me. Yeah, let's get him on loudspeaker. Is that yeah, right? you're on now, so you've got a uh, Jill Scott, Rio Ferdinand's coming in as the special guest, get, probably getting a few quid, cash in hand. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about it after, guys. Right, right, see, Gary, what is it? Or you, can't you talk now? Well, I was going to give Gary loads, but I'll leave it until another time. <laughs> <laughs> Are you all right, Ryan? It was only Jake. How are you guys? You okay? Yeah, good, thanks. You, you've had a chat before, haven't you? Yeah, you turned me down. Yeah, we've had a few, yeah. A few years ago. I you in for the friendly next season, guys. Good, you good. The game with me, yeah. Yeah, good. Why, why did you turn them down? Was it the money, Ryan, or the interference, <laughs> or the TV? <laughs> 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 I, I had to wait to see how, how you got on well with them first. I couldn't be the only scouts at work for them. Could yeah, I? exactly. <laughs> Go ahead, what is it? Do you know the, the place you had for James's birthday? Yeah. Have you got the fella's number to tell me? <laughs> <laughs> Are you an agent? Yeah, sound lad, yeah. Just give him a bit of cash if he sounds. <laughs> I'll, send you the, I'll send you the number over to finish here. Right, 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 let's start. Don't we normally have jellies and sweets? And... Yeah. Oh, we've got some Nando's coming. Oh, have we? I wasn't going to start it, but actually, you just said oh, yeah. United have had over 100 shots in the last three it's games. Three games, yeah. Right. There? What? Yeah. Against them? Yeah. Against them, yeah. yeah. Mate, eight, I think 83 or something like that entries into the box against Brentford. It's, yeah. yeah. You used to get more than that when you were in the back. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That is, as, as much as like, we're laughing, that's, that's impressive. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> Sorry. You're it's centre back. Nice. You're centre back on Sunday for United at Old Trafford. You're going out onto that pitch. With the other players, so you're taking uh, Lindelof's place. Mm. What are you doing in the next three days to make sure that United only have a few shots on the goal against Liverpool? It's fucking prayer. Tough question. Yeah, it's, true, yeah. Sorry. 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 it's a tough Sorry. question. To start. No, no, I'm saying you're experienced at the back. You're, you're captain of the team. I think you've you seen them. You've seen them do that every week now for about six months. What are you doing? I look at when I first came to United. I was I understood what that game immediately, like from you. I was asking questions about like. 
I'm here in Liverpool is a massive, massive game. So you stand, I start asking questions. I'll be trying to get into the players what this game means to the people, to us as, as, as players, to try and charge people up to get them. To, so the motivation seems to be there. I think this team has been questioned about motivation, application, like the work ethic, body language. Like in that game, it's like, that's, a, that's, an, that's illegal to be thrown at you in them type of games. So just that as a starting point will be where I'd be going. I think tactics and that will be, the manager sorts all that shit out. But I think I'd be looking at the, the enormity of this game. You need to understand what this means. You, you, you can't walk down the street after this game, you get beat or you, embar you get embarrassed. You know, and we got embarrassed at times. But that midfield in, in front of you, what, I mean, what I'm saying is that midfield, <laughs> that, to be fair, is quite empty. Yeah, discipline. I need people in front. I'll be saying that like, as a centre back. Listen, bodies. Listen, I need some protection in front of so they don't just seamlessly come through and get to us without any resistance. That's what it seems like in a minute. Yeah. Transitions in games. Do you not start to the us. players or the manager though? But I think it, it's happens, a bit of both. it happens every game. Every game. So every game a team. I, I look at Man United and, and, and I, I, I know Ten Hag had a little pop at me a, a couple of months ago, which is fine. But it, it hasn't changed in, when I watched that Brentford game with it. It's like it's two separate teams in one. So you've got sort of like the front five almost trying to press and everyone's there's just this massive space. Surely I just think if you're a, any competent coach would would you would look at that and go, okay, we're either all up there or we're all back here. It's not I don't think it's that difficult. But well, surely a, as a player you should recognise as a midfielder, oh they're getting in a few times, I need to offer a bit more protection but as a midfielder. Leaders, you need leaders to be yeah. talking like that yeah. and pulling people about in the games and, and saying sit 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 for, how many times people would turn around or you or you'd say to someone, this the next five minutes, just mm. sit yeah. and, and stay tight, be hard to play against. But don't seem I think emotion comes into this team a lot. They're quite emotional players to just go on gung ho at times and just lose. Fernandez that. does that a lot. Yeah, and they lose that that kind of there's no rigidness of the team. But we right? keep expecting to change, don't we? We yeah, I think it'll be the same on Sunday. But, but that's the point. That's, if, yeah, if it doesn't change, strange. I, I can see that in an off in a one-off game where someone's lost their head or they get a bit excited and they're running all over the place. But it happens that often. The same thing. That surely every week the manager must accept it to a certain point and say, well, okay. There's something in it that he likes. Or I don't. I can't quite work out because it's, it's not. It's not. It's not like Pep or Klopp, Klopp and we're talking about <clears throat> overload midfield and transitions and people moving here and really complicated. We're talking about something that we'd expect from the teams coming up. Do you think he that thinks the players just, will, are still good enough to play that open way, like, like they like they did in the cup? But I, I think it's more defending rather than when you say open up. It's, I think we always associate with the ball, don't we? Okay, we're on the ball, we're all flying forward. But this is Man United without the ball. Mm. And the most obvious thing for any team at any level of football is to be together. Compact, compact. Yeah. compact. Yeah. To because you, you, break you, see them, you see that you, when, you, when you watch the game, especially at home, obviously the fans are behind them, they start the game. And like, what game was it they started and they scored early and everything. And they still pushing men forward, the front men. But the midfield, they weren't man to man on them. So if they did win it up there, they were too far off yeah. of the mid. So they, they broke the first press straight into the midfield, and then it was Fulham. Mm. It was watching, yeah. when I watched against Fulham. A Wobi turned straight into the back. Three. And you think, so, how can that be yeah. that yeah. easy? You look at you look at Kobe Maynard as well. Everyone's raving about him, and, and rightly so. He's been magnificent since he's come into the team. But I don't see anyone trying to protect him. He's a kid. Mm. Imagine a, a young kid coming into one of our teams. You try and protect that kid. There's only probably the odd one, like maybe a Rooney, you don't have to protect. But in the main, you like, let's make sure there's bodies around. Don't leave him exposed. How many games do you see him get left exposed? And you think, for a young kid, he shouldn't be... Imagine that feeling, being exposed in that midfield. It's a lonely place in there if it's big spaces. Yeah. So they're the things that I think that there's got to be... Elder, play, older players, leaders in that team, or the coaches that go, listen, you make sure you tighten up in that area, especially for the game at the weekend. But the point you made before about, um, or was it you, uh, James, about there's no fear maybe or from the manager's point of view and from the players looking up. I remember when I come to United, I, mean, I used to laugh and giggle a little bit when I used to hear like Giggsy or Bex go, oh, I've got, I'm on that side of the pitch, or you even, mm. I'm on that side of the pitch. I said, what are you talking the manager's side, I'm on his side. He don't, he don't <laughs> fucking shut up. He don't shut up. He's on me all game. I mean, yeah. And then when he, the odd time where it rolls under your foot and goes out, just for a lack of conversation. What was the odd time now? What <laughs> <laughs> the game now? He would roast you. Okay, and I used yeah. to think, these are like, they've won five, six Premier Leagues, Champions League, etc. cetera, successful fellas, experienced, and they're like shitting themselves a little bit about having to walk in at half time after being on that side of the pitch. But I don't sense that fear, or a little bit of fear, Maybe even respect, maybe, for the manager at the moment. Not, not respect, probably strong, but the fear factor to say, I need to put in certain elements that are non-negotiables. 
the fundamentals of being a footballer, work hard, body language, etc. That don't seem to happen for me. At this, at Do you moment. think there's like an element of panic at the minute? Because I remember the Brentford game, was it Martinez come on and he just outside of the foot just whacked the ball at Harry Maguire and I was like, why are you doing that in that moment? It was like a bit of build-up play. And I feel like when I watch Maguire for United versus England, when he's with Stones, he looks a lot more calm, sure, I think, yeah. sometimes. And as a centre-half, did that play a big difference who you were playing alongside? Yeah, I think you de definitely get comfort in like the familiarity with a player it's always seeing the same person by his side and they've played together for quite a long time haven't they Stones and Maguire yeah. but I just think the environment in England is different it's, it's a more stable mm. calm mm -hmm. environment that they've all kind of bought into uh, the, the, the environment at United is still like they don't know where it's going they don't know what direction they're going so. I don't think it's a, it's a coincidence it's not a team though is it because that Nando's going to get cold isn't yeah. it I don't think it's a coincidence that Tommy Main is man of the match in that game with people around him because he's obviously got people talking to him yeah. he looked who was he that, looked, sorry? Kobe, Kobe Maynard. Yeah. Man yeah. of the match for the England game. Yeah, he was, yeah, yeah. He was, Declan Rice, I could hear him. He next to him and then saying, yeah. behind him. Rio, you, you mentioned body language and I've thought about this a lot in the last few days and it was the topic of conversation after the game on Saturday night after the Brentford game. Marcus Rashford, I, I, I don't know how to say this, but to me there's something not right. Mm. He's not right. And it's not just a case of he's not playing football well. He doesn't look happy. And I'm looking at him thinking, I actually am worried about him. Mm. And I don't know whether when you watch him, you know, you watch a player and you think, actually, there's something there. You know, we know there's obviously been a couple of incidents this season. We know he's coming under a bit of pressure. His form's bad. We know that. But I look at him and I think, that's not right. That, that he, I genuinely would worry about him at this moment in time because it... It's not a lad that's grown up with the spirit and freedom of playing for United as a kid. That is something who's... Do you, do you feel the same way, that you have that sense of worry about him rather than thinking, well, why is he not doing this or why is he not doing that? I, I've gone past that, me, now. I feel like genuinely a different place. I think it's a pivotal moment in his career now. I think he's, he's not a kid anymore, do you know what I mean? I think a lot of people look at our potential talent and 26, what was you doing at 26? Do you know what I mean? But we're all still making mistakes, don't get me wrong, but mm. on the football pitch, you kind of had it locked down, you knew what you were doing, you knew what you were about, you knew who you were type thing, but... I think there's a big decision to make with, with him. For, from him, I think he's got to look at who's around him. I know his family play a big part with him, which is, which is great. But then who are the external people around that? Are they the right people? Are they enabling him to make excuses for himself behind closed doors? Or, is he, or are they saying, listen, look at yourself yeah. and be accountable for what you're doing and what you, what you are at the moment? How are we going to get through this? Or is it just an excuse environment he's in? He needs to look at that and own that, and I think make big decisions. I think that even when I left, left uh, Leeds, it's different, but I left Leeds, I could have gone to Chelsea, and there's probably a club that I probably preferred to go to at the time, but the reason I left to go to Leeds was because it was out of London, and the external people around me I needed to get away from. He might need to be in that situation and go, you know what, I'll get rid of him and stay in Manchester, or I've got to leave Manchester and get rid of those people. It might not just be, be that. I think it's an, it's an accumulation of different things, but that could be a big part because the people around you do have a big influence on how you are. It's definitely, especially accountability. How, how good do you think he is now? I think Rashford probably over the last sort of four or five years, alongside probably Fernandes, have probably been seen as the players for United who, who they've got. I mean, how good do you think he is? Because when people say he's out of form or he should be doing this, he should be doing that, is he of the level of Salah, Son... Harlan, those type of... I don't actually think he is. I think he's just... I've always said that. I think he's just a level below that. So I, I sometimes think the, the expectation on him to be what they are for their teams, I'm not quite sure he's, he's at that level, to be honest. I think he's shown moments mm -hmm. where you go... Is City level. goal? The goal yeah, you talk about those City. teams, the structure behind those teams yeah, to help different. those players as so well. So you think if he was in a better... So we'll go I, back to I, Rio's point, if he moved to a team that had better structure, better organisation, so. whatever, do so you think he'd be at that level? Only because of the ability that we've mm. seen and we've seen in flashes, and not just on the Premier League stage, on the world stage. We've seen him in the World Cup play well as well. And I think that, you know, he's somebody that he's, he's had good moments and he's had bad moments. And what you need is a, a, a consistency with your team that can make you mm. continue to play consistently. I think when we're talking about body language and everything, it can get dangerous because nobody at Man United, for me, is, is, is playing particularly well. He gets more. He gets more for whatever reason. Maybe, like when you were talking about not long ago, coming from the area and he should be doing more. Yes, I understand all that. But he does get more. But I think a lot of it does stem from the fact that he's not in a great structure of how he played. He came through all that, play, that, that time when he had the injury and he was still playing through the injury. All that stuff, he's been through a lot. To get to where he is now, 
and he's still inconsistent. And I think that's it's got something to do with the way they play, and he's not playing in a system what's making him grow in the system. But when you're the biggest player, you're the biggest star, the, the light shines bright Absolutely. on you. And in moments where it's not going well, you're the guy that takes all of the, the kind of the, the punches, and it's unfortunate for him. But I, I, when you talk about is he that level, I think he does show moments where you go, gee, he does take your breath away with some of the things that he does. He just doesn't do it enough. And I'll agree with right. I don't know if it's the team. He needs a stru the structure. I think we all needed a team around us to be the players that we became. And he hasn't had the consistent team around him or the consistency of the managers being there. But I, 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 I think you just put ability to, to one side and you just look at the fun basics of his game. Like, what's he good at? He's great at running behind. As a defender, I wouldn't want to play against him. He'd give you nightmares because he can run behind. He's so quick. His timing's brilliant. He can finish as well. And, but... Either he doesn't run behind as much as maybe he should, or he's disillusioned because the ball ain't coming and he's, he's kept running behind, it ain't coming. And I don't know what it is. He needs to work that. I mean, you're a striker, right? What would you be doing in those situations but where thing, it's not thing, going for you? But the thing is, Reed, with, with me and the way I played up front, I was up the centre waiting for things to build up. He's on the left waiting for things to happen. And when sometimes the ball comes to him, maybe after a while he hasn't had it, and he's t trying to take people on. And you lose the ball in those situations, whereas some of the times me playing down the centre, you can make a run, you might get a shot, you, get, right? you lay it off, you get in, you're, get, you're involved in the game all the time, you're building yourself in the game. And when you look at, you look at Rashford, some of the times he's not in the game at all, which is very difficult. Him, my, my thing about him is he, he's had good seasons and not good, uh, great seasons. Uh, and listen, we've all been there as players, but... You said before about not having that team and structure behind him, and I get that. But I played in a Liverpool team who was never the best. Mm. A team fighting for the top four, and that's what Man United have probably been over the last sort of say seven or eight years. And you had sort of Stevie being that figure. So I'm saying Rashford's that figure, the main man. You know, the, uh, he shines brightly on him. I'd want more from him. not just say he's got to score every week, but taking that sort of mantle of like I'm going to run everywhere. I'm. Mm. You're almost. You, you're looking down Do and make excuses for him. I know, that's what I mean. For him. And I go back to Tottenham. You're talking about other teams having structure. Tottenham have been a basket case for a long time. You know, like different managers, different styles of play. Harry Kane's always there. Mm. Son's Wait, always what there. What do you mean excuses like, for him? It's just but the, the structure around him, the team around him. Do you think he'd the be manager? Playing, no, he's, he's, the, way, the way his ability, do you think oh, not, in a structured team, would he be playing better? There's no question mark about his ability, absolutely. But he, right, we've all made the point. He's outstanding, but there's something amiss with him. You look, and we've had these conversations every few months. A player can have an off spell or a dip. But I just look at his, I almost look as if he's certainly not enjoying his football. No, Roy, I, 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 we've heard to football, but actually before when I was talking and said about, I'm worried about him, you were nodding. Yeah. I, I'm actually worried about him, uh, to me, beyond Personal. football. Yeah, 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 look no, at him. yeah I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm worried about him, but you look at a period and go, there's something amiss, there's something going on with this kid. Yeah, doesn't it? <laughs> you're on about the people around him, whether it be family or the manager, you're on about uh, Ferguson like, screaming, like, who's on his case every day? Yeah. Mm. Who's giving them, what, there's nothing wrong with the old-fashioned kick up the arse and go, come on, we need more from you. When the team's not at it, if you want to be this leader and you're on the big contracts, then there is that responsibility. But he still needs that. He needs that to be happening. If there's no one around for him to happen... But I don't think that is happening. I don't think there's anybody on his case. But that doesn't mean to say he still can't produce and start running a bit more. He's been at the club a long time since he was a kid. Pressure affects different players. Body language, you go down to it. But sometimes there is that. Sometimes you've got to get hold of a player and go... Like, Nothing changes in respect of an experience, experienced yeah, players in a team that's meant to help you. There's loads of experience around him. Yeah, who who would you say? Yeah, you look at, you look at the, experience. Uh, Varane's experience. He's not that. He's not that but I, I'd no, expect but I'm more from but, Varane, but, but, but like but, Maguire. Yeah, but he's experienced, right? You've asked, are they, there's experienced players mm -hmm. around him. There's international players around him. Players who are older. He hasn't got respect for them players. I, feel I don't like think Man he's got United respect for them. But, 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 but he has experience you. around him. That, that's he's got not experience the around him, but you have to respect the experience around him because look at Harry, Harry, Harry Maguire and what Harry Maguire's going through. Yes, you'd like to think that Harry can step above that and try and help a young player through, but man's got his own problems. And if that was the case, but, surely he'd be helping Marcus. But the other players, lads, lads who've won the World Cup, lads who've won European Cups, are they getting a grip of him? Shouldn't Rashford be helping? What I'm saying is Rashford's no, the main man. Hand hand. Hand. He's the main hand man. He's the main man. The 26th. Young and I was. It's really. It's, 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 you know what? I, I hear what Gary's saying, and there's a, there's a deep worry. 
to him because, yeah. like, for his form and, like, people talk about how he is on the pitch and everything. Any chips? It's really... Chips. It's not... Chips is rice. Chips. It's chips well, why are we having the same conversation every few months about Rashford? I don't know why he gets so much, to be honest, for some well, reason. I, you know, I, I saw him do an interview the other day talking about why... Yeah. Why are they talking about my off-field, my this, my that? Why is there all that part of it? Why does that have to be part of it? Why every all of them are buying the gear and buying the cars and doing the stuff and doing and he's the one that's more than anyone else, it's especially who gets hammered. Do you think like should you be I don't know getting caught like going out and whatever else? Would you not be a little bit more careful? Well, when you're going you out, you're, you're, that... you're trying to be careful. Things happen. Things but happen. Maybe you shouldn't be there. If all the eyes are on you and you know there's that like heated press on you at the minute, do you know what I mean? I think why. Are you maybe missing training and stuff I mean, like that? We've all been in his life. Like he's a young man as well. When you're at well, United, just... Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine what it's like you know, being at United. When the boss left, it's been talked about now for I don't know how long, 10, 10, 11 years ago, you were there at the very beginning when, obviously, it went from sort of the boss leaving to this new era, of which has been a struggle. And it became difficult quite quickly. And obviously you were still there, Nemanja Vidic was still there, I think Patrice was still there, um, Michael Carrick was still there, Rat Giggsy was still there. You think about the five or six players in that dressing room, what, what changed, what, what, what was it that all of a sudden became going from a title winner to feeling, because obviously you were title winners, you, you know, between you all, you won dozens of them. What happened? I mean, I wasn't there. What happened in that dressing room psychologically, culturally, mentally? What happened? We were old. That was one, that was one thing. We were old, like the, the guys you mentioned there. Um, no, nah, I don't know. I, I, I think the word was read. Really he, he came in and he changed a lot of things, telling you stuff and what you weren't used to. And yeah, I think there's a few like old wives' houses, like like mm. lies, little white lies. Right. That said, uh, he showed us me and Emmanuel Vidic a video of like Philip Jagielka and yeah. whoever. Did that happen? Oh, that, that, didn't happen. that didn't happen. No, no. No, okay. But, it was less Scott. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what it was? It was um, two moments happened. Well, two, uh, two moments, well, f probably three. One of the moments I remember getting on the plane after a tour. You know what them tours are like when you used to go to, like, I think it was, it was Asia or something that like we went with them. Tiring, weren't they? They were tiring yeah. tours, long, two weeks. Yeah. Hard work, time difference, etc. cetera. I remember getting on the, the plane on the way home and seeing the manager sprawled out on the chair. Look dishevelled. Big club, this, isn't it? That's what he said to me. Well, and I thought, oh. like, I've said this before, but like a kit launch at Everton's at Goodison on the pitch, and it? no disrespect, a kit mm. launch at United is like yeah. a worldwide tour. Mm. Yeah, it's very different. So he, he quickly grasped that at the end of this tour, and I thought, okay, I, I, I'd like to have thought that he might have known that before. Okay, you let you let that pass. We play against Liverpool and Chelsea, and I remember in the in the training sessions we were setting up to stop um, Hazard and Coutinho, and he put a box in the middle of the pitch, or in the area that they play on, the inside, inside left. And the players are looking at each other like, we don't really set up to stop individuals. Never done that at United, really. I don't know if you guys remember anything like that. Messi, didn't even really have a massive plan for him. We should have. Should have done. <laughs> but it wasn't like, it was, it was, it was almost, like, the, yeah, it was almost like that mindset as if yeah. you worry about us more yeah. than we worry about you. And that, them, them two games really made me think, wow, we're, we're, we're setting up almost like as a defeatist mentality and very different to what a, win, a title winning team was last season. So it was a very big shift in the mindset. And that was one of the things that I think a lot of the players were like, not against him, but just like it, it gives you a question mark in your head. And that little question mark is a big, a big thing within the squad. It reminds me a little bit of when Roy Hodgson came to Liverpool. And that you... David Moyes done a brilliant job at Everton, but it's a completely different job at Man United and Roy at Liverpool. And I always remember, the, you can't change your mindset, really. It's difficult. And I always remember, I think, the third or fourth game of that season, you played, you played at Anfield. I, I, I think I just joined Sky. And Daniel Sturridge scored the winner. Remember, like a, a back header. And then second half. I don't know if you were playing in the game, mm. Rio, but you just put, push Liverpool back and you hit the crossbar. And you, but you lost the game. And then... I always remember uh, Moyes' interview afterwards. It was like he was really pleased yeah, with how you played. Yeah. And it, it remind, I, I remember saying, that's the mental, that's what Everton would have done if yeah. they'd come to Anfield. They'd be going, oh my God, we put them on. I know we lost, but oh, we put them on the back foot. We did this. I was thinking, 
it doesn't matter how you play in them games, even if you play well, if you get beat, you got beat. Yeah. And that's the end of it. Mm. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I just thought he's gonna to have to get used to that change of like it's not enough going away to a big ground and playing well no. yeah. if you get yeah. beat. And it's just trying to change that mentality, I think for a manager's but, difficult. But really from a player's perspective, did you feel that any did you felt that the team and the players dropped? Any percentage? Do you feel like there was an element of sort of also there was a bit of a, a bit like you know what I mean? Just to the edge off your game, you know what I mean? You no, know, like... I think we were talking about Marcus there, just uh, about personal pride of performance and whatnot, and, and effort and work ethic. We we're just all talking about. I think that that's something that I don't think really drops your your, your work ethic. Mm. But in terms of like tactical, when you, when you I don't know. Have you ever been in a changing where you're questioning the manager's tactics in your head? It does take something out of you, I think. And the first thing you do, if you're not as sure about and and confident in them tactics, you do look over your... That little look over your shoulder as to what are we doing Mm. is a big thing and takes out of your game. To be fair, it's it's not that. It's actually devastating. Mm. Because the minute the players start doing that, it's a devastating thing. Not not just in any any football team, in any sort of environment, because that's where you start to get that negativity spiral. When you're all starting to sort of whisper and you're all starting to talk and then the... Not the excuses, but the yeah, the drain starts to occur. I think a little thing. Remember, remember the boss used to do where we used to go um, on a Friday night at the hotel or the or the Saturday morning before a game. If you sat at your table, you knew someone was getting told that they're not playing, mm. or he's changed the squad. The, you're out of the squad, or you're going to be in the, yeah. in the uh, stands. He said, yeah, I remember uh, David Moy said, um, I don't do that. You're just not playing. If whoever it is, I'm not explaining myself to anybody. If you want to come and see me, come and see me Monday. So obviously there's a lot of Was he aggressive there. in his vibe? Did he no, come he's, just, a... he's just, this is what I am. This is what I'm doing. And I know you respect that, but then sometimes if it's a squad game yeah. and the squad wins you everything, it ain't just the first 11. You've got to take care of those other guys who are on the peripheral of the squad, the peripheral of the team. And he was like, this is the way I'm doing it now. And so that doesn't affect me because I was playing at the time when he first come in. But there are players, Chicharito, for instance, you could tell he's sitting there going, like, Sir Alex Ferguson respected me. Yeah. And he took that as maybe a, as a disrespect. And other players who were squad players maybe the same. You know, when you've been with one manager for so long, yeah. I remember when we changed managers at City, and I had, when I look back, I had such a close mindset. I wasn't open to change. And plus, mm. you're at United, you've been winning things, and then someone comes in. Do you think it was a little bit of that as, as well, or were you open to change? You're right. Jill, David Moy said to me once, he said, I felt like the stepfather walking in trying to instruct yeah. the children of the father that's left. Can't win. Mm. Sure. He said, and I thought it was a really... I, I, I've, never, I've never heard a better, a, good, a better a good, analogy, actually. Yeah, it's a good analogy simply because he's coming... He was chosen by Sir Alex yeah. to come in. He's, already, he's been given this, like, this, this kind of, like, esteem. So he's coming in and he wants people to know that I'm here, man, this is it, and I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. You have to look at... Look at it from David Moyes' point of view as well. This is a massive thing for him. Yeah, absolutely. Massive thing for him. Uh, did Ferguson ever come in? Even though, no, not at all. No, there's always them stories years ago at Liverpool when Shankly left that he'd still sort of pop into the training ground. Yeah. Was there ever that feeling that he'd be about? No. No. I, I went and see the gaffer after, about around Christmas time for a coffee. He asked to see me, just asking what's going on. And I was like, Phew. Not going that. You're not going that way at the moment. We're not. We're not winning games. You know mm. what I mean. So I couldn't. You could just say what's on the tin. But um, Gaff obviously wanted him to do well. You know what I mean. The way he spoke yeah. to me was like he was gutted with the way things were panning out. And so I, I felt sorry for David Moyes. I think anyone yeah. who come in there is an impossible mm. job. Mm-hmm. After Klopp now, yeah, he comes in. It's gonna have to be do, go some to. to Keep that consistency and, and, and recharge that team and go again. But is it you? You still hope a group of players, <laughs> yeah. though, a senior group of players, would would give a manager the benefit of the doubt. I know we've had conversations before about different managers going in and the perception of a manager coming in and what it be the staff he brings in. Obviously, Ferguson's left, and he makes a couple of them decisions and the players who are setting their ways. Mm. And then it's subconsciously you're already making your mind up that maybe he's not mm-hmm. the one. So what chance has a manager got when he yeah, walks into a building? Exactly. And you're still talking about experienced players not going, OK, we'll have to roll with that bit. We'll have to roll with the fact he doesn't tell the players they're not playing or whatever. Because whatever you've been used to, obviously a new manager coming with new ideas. No, no, them conversations did happen where you go, listen, it's changed now. No, Gaffer's not in no more. Just get on with it. Because you yeah. see the body language in the face. Oh, I know, but subconsciously, real. You mm. players, because that's what we do. When people come in, you're going to go, what, 
what, yeah, yeah. what have you got? What are you bring into the party? Yeah. Would it be coaching staff? And if players, especially if a group of players and a manager just and he doesn't win the first few games or they don't bring a couple of players in, I think the transfer was a problem. Remember his first summer, David yeah. Moyes, he didn't get a couple of players he was after, yeah. and all of a sudden you're people almost taking before, yeah, 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 you're, yeah, you're before you start. And then you got no yeah, 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 of course, that mm -hmm. was a big one. Massive. He brought a player from Everton, well, well, all that type of perception of a manager coming in. And then when you've no momentum, you've no uh, feel good factor towards this manager, it's a long way back. Mm. Absolutely. So you do feel, I, I look at it from the other side, I look from a manager, go, hey lads, hopefully these experienced players will get me over the line as well, where I am finding my feet, even though he's an experienced manager. Also, we were told that the first thing I said, we were old. As players, your, your impact and influence on a team is like doing that. So there's new young players, the Chris Smalling and Phil Jones are coming in and they're having more of an impact in, in, the, in the team from a playing perspective. Mm. I get your point about in the background talking, but your main talking and your main work does get done in the 90 minutes. So it becomes difficult. Giggsy's not playing as much, do you know what I mean? The manual village What about injuries. the staff, Rio? Was that an issue? Like David, I know there was a lot of talking, and I, I, I would never knock a manager for bringing all his own staff in, mm. but then there was talk, he should have kept on to one or two. I'm not saying that would have been the answer, like Mickey Field and one yeah. or two others. Mm. Was that feeling amongst the players a little bit? There was lots of change. No, I think the guess what the manager said to me, like he said that he did say to um, David Moyes, he advised him, Maybe to right. keep one of his staff on, either Rene, continuity, right, yeah, yeah, and or, I get that, or, or Mick Phelan. And Mick Phelan, listen, I, I called Mick Phelan that a couple of times when I was there. I've spoken to him since about it, and the manager said to me in uncertain terms when he told me to shut up, he said, "He's the importance of this man. Don't ever underestimate it because of what he does for me as a manager. He allows me to like, delegate yeah. and let him do a lot of the hard." Pushing and pulling, and I just he concentrate on the team. Chain, he just bullied, yeah. bullied. hammered him, hammered him every day. <laughs> but he's, he said like that, that was what they would have been there for to kind of appease him a little bit and get get him through that uh, first yeah. the hurdles that he will come across. But he chose to go his own way, and again I respect that. Yeah. He said, "Listen, I'm not listening to you. You're the, you're the, the main man, Sir Alex, but I'm going to go my own way." And I respected that, but with hindsight, which is a great thing, he probably would have maybe had a little bit more help. Just that getting on the plane. I probably wouldn't have seen him like that, dishevelled after the tour for two mm. weeks, because Mick Phelan would have dealt with all logistics, all of the medical staff, and when you get up, when you go to bed, when you're eating your food, mm. etc., and travel. Yeah. Wait a minute, night out, Rio. Give him a break. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> We've all got planes out there, haven't we? <laughs> after the tour, <laughs> Rio, just me go. Oh. Just going, going back a little bit before that, the, the period from 2006 to 2011 is is Manchester United's most successful period ever, in the sense there was four four title wins and three Champions League finals. And the greatest team of all time is now you know, widely recognised as being that Barcelona team that we played twice in the Champions League final. Do you ever look back at those two matches and you know, you're smiling now? Because obviously I was there, I think, for both of them in terms of hearing the sort of team talks. I, was, you know, I retired on the second one and was still in the dressing room though. Do you look back at those things and think, that would have been us. We'd have been the greatest team of all time if we'd beaten Barcelona in them two games. What, what do you reflect upon those two games and how, you know, what could we have done differently? Scored they, one. What, what, that, what, that they Barcelona so, team? They were too good. The they, were team, they were just, like, that, that's it. Like, it almost gives me a little bit of like, um, what's the word where you go, it takes the sting out of it a little bit that they were yeah. actually that good. If I we get beat so, by yeah. a team that's... Yeah. In and around us, as, like, we, sh we should have done a bit more. Yeah. Listen, we, they took all our weapons off us mm. and we went to a fight, a war, with no guns, no knives. Like, that's what it felt like. I actually, it's the only time in my career where I've been in the game and thought, we can't do anything. anything that's yeah. what it felt like. And they were, they were that good. They had us, like, on a roundabout, continuous, just, mm. like, flying about, dizzy. I remember me and Emmanuel standing at Wembley and just, you know you have that sometimes, you have a look at each other during a game. And it's like, you, don't, you haven't got to say a word, but... Yeah, yeah. We're getting pumped. <laughs> we're getting pumped. And like, I can't do nothing about it. Who so was their forwards then, the front three? Pedro, was it Pedro, Pedro Messi? Pedro one side. Messi was the false number nine then, and just didn't, and didn't play nowhere near David us. Villa. And David Villa. It was one of Pedro the was, Pe Pedro, Pedro was, the, was, was the one. Yes. Yeah. Like, because without the ball, he, he was, was a trigger. Behind, yeah, yeah. So. trigger, run behind. But the trigger, well, as soon as they lost the ball, bang, he was like, they were so aggressive. All five foot five, mm -hmm. aggressive, just nick, take the ball off you. I, like, I always the, remember the, the game they were saying United game. would have an advantage because yeah. of that Wembley. Yeah. 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 Kind yeah. of home. I, I, I remember when, the when the teams got picked, and I was at home, obviously, desperate to see Barcelona win it, but <laughs> no. I remember looking at the Man U team going, wow. Mm, very good like team. It was like Giggsy played centre midfield. It was That's like 4 right, 4 Giggs, 2. Yeah. Giggs was in centre midfield, I think, with Carrick. Carrick, yeah. yeah. 
And I'm thinking, <clears> not the even if you had Roy Keane and Brian Robson at the peak mm. in a two on their yeah, own in you there, get around. Yeah. you get run around. 4v2 in there. And this is like, I mean, obviously gigs in kind of great players. And I always remember Wayne scored just before half time. Mm. And me watching, I was thinking, because if you're going, if you're getting beat one nil, it's hard to go more defensive. If you know what I mean. Mm. And I, I was watching that, thinking the Rooney goal means it gives you a chance to actually get another mid or move mm. route, Wayne wide and bring someone else in. Just go four five one, and you can do that at one one. And then you come out to second half, and it was the same. And I was mm. like, oh my god! Mm. You need about nine in midfield. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I was with Bastian Schweinsteiger yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. I interviewed him. And they got pumped off Barcelona. I don't know what year it was, but then they played them the year after and they beat them 7 0 yeah. over two yeah. legs. Yeah. 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 And basically, they had a meeting before the game and they basically worked to Robin and Ribery with their wide players. And obviously, Barcelona's midfield, uh, fullback sometimes would come into midfield. And they literally said to Robin and Ribery, just stand in central midfield with us and we're just going to, whatever, how many players they have in there, we're just going to go have an, 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 an exactly the same yeah. number of players mm. in there. And they ended up doing them in the end and counter attacking off them. Mm. But we were quite open in midfield that game, <laughs> weren't we? Did you feel like they just had an extra player? I remember playing Spain loads of times. Three or four players. Then I'd be like, I remember one point counting the players on the pitch. Mm. I was like, how have they got like, it was as if they had extra players. No, you, you, I remember just standing. I remember I got, I picked up the ball. It was a bit of a scuffle with Busquets, and I, I was late on. They were, they were when I took the ball off him, and the referee blew the whistle, uh, and he went, "You, uh, Vid, Vidic, boom, boom, boom." <laughs> <laughs> I felt was so it? little, I felt so like, was it? Was it? like boom, just long smashing ball, long it. Ball, long ball. <laughs> <laughs> I felt so just like, I thought, no, I can't even, I actually I almost laughed, I almost <laughs> laughed, I felt so embarrassed. Like, I've never been so embarrassed on the pitch, and I remember standing after the game watching them go up to get a trophy. I think it was me, Giggsy, and Scolzi, and Wazza might have been there. And they got your hat, they do it, everyone does that now. I think we would have started that. Yeah. But, Let's get off this pitch. <laughs> oh, you know, no. We've been embarrassed. Well, that's the problem like... when you play for a big club like United. You play Barcelona, you're on about ch- you just do a wee play, but sometimes yeah. you have to it's change. Good. Yeah. You have to change. Yeah. Yeah. You're playing against these brilliant teams, and we've done it earlier. Barcelona used to toy with us, mm. and we'd always play 4 4 2. So sometimes you look back and go, yeah, it's nice to be brave, but there's a fine line between mm. brave. Yeah. We, we beat Spain in um, the Euros and we had 20% possession and they had 80, but we hit them on two counters. But if we hadn't played like that, we would have got mm, yeah, absolute. So yeah. you do we, have to. We'd done that in 2008, hadn't we? Yeah, away. Yeah. We'd done it away. Well, and you would. Yeah, yeah. No, we beat them in the semi final in 2008. Yeah. It wasn't Pep's team, but it was something similar. Scholes yeah. scored the long range. That's right, goal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Two legs, yeah. Yeah. And you, did they dominate possession? Uh, yeah, yeah, just uh, a bit. But I think that game, the tactics, we kind of played. In both the games, both them finals, we played pressing really high. Proactive, yeah, weren't we? And our, and our game around that time well, probably wasn't that against the big teams in Europe when we were going uh, playing. Like Leon away was a hard game back then, and yeah. other teams we used to play. We do used think, to be a bit more solid. Well, do you think it was something to do with this interesting? So I go back to the, the Champions League final we played in 2005, but we, we did something different in that final that we'd done getting there. And I don't know if it's something to do. Speaking to Rafa afterwards, it was about it's a one-off game. It's not a two-leg. So sometimes when you go away, you go, okay, we're doing this, yeah. and then we're going to get them at home, and we're going to do this. I didn't know if maybe it might be something to do with that in terms of it's a one-off game, it's a final. No one's home or away. Mm. The boss is a maverick, though, as well. Game. He smells something and just goes with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what I think he was. He, and to be fair, his instincts were right because in the first game in Rome, if you remember, we had three yeah. or four chances that we could have scored off them playing that, but us pressing really high. But once they got that goal. Yeah. The game was do, you know, dead. do you know? I think we're thinking about him. I think that he was a he was a sort of a, he was a he thought of the game as being this is my legacy. Yeah. And I think he thought I need to win this yeah. m- the way that I play, and we're going to go and take on Barcelona, and we're going to go and sort of if you like, because I think the year before when we beat them in the in the 2008 semi final, mm. I don't know if you remember. You talked about tactics before about we never did anything different. Mm. Do you remember Carlos put in the map? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's the only time I've ever seen a Manchester United coach. You talked about it before and I thought about it. He put a map on the pitch, it, like a like a rug. I don't know what it was. It was some sort of like... The cones on. Yeah, and, put, and he basically said to Scholes and to Carrick, who are in midfield, he said, one of you's always got to be stood there, right? And so basically, if anyone... And, and, and we did the most disciplined performance I've ever seen. He actually put Rooney and Jason Park, I think, in the wide areas. It was Scholes and Carrick in midfield. And basically, with this training for two days, even handball at times, because it was like in between games, where basically, let's say Carrick went over to this side, Scholes had to be literally on this mat. And they did it in the, in the game for 180 minutes. Mm. <clears throat> it's the only time. But we were literally like... Did it work? Do you remember Arsenal? Yeah. Yeah, it worked. Yeah. So, yeah. so the worst yeah. when you get the, the game, result. Yeah. Arsenal at City last week, 
it was exactly like that for 180 minutes and then scores he scores a yeah. worldie. Yeah. Like that... protection. Are you going to go to DFS and drop a rug off a of Karen? <laughs> <laughs> for Sunday. Yeah. protection. <laughs> Real. The opposite of that, the last game I saw you play was as a pundit. Was it, would it be at QPR at home? You, you finished at QPR, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Not good times. And I watched you there and I thought, I, I always remember I finished at United and I, I, that, that was me. I know you talked about it, haven't you, going up to Celtic and you think about, <clears throat> do you wish you'd finished at United? Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, it, 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 it was difficult to watch you at QPR in terms of how it was for you compared to how you'd been. Yeah, because. It's the first time I've been in a change room and I've heard people talk about money. Wages. That's why you went there, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> That's why they were talking about it. That's why you're wages. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, pretty perfect. No, I'm just like, I'm just like are you not training? No, like, I'm on 60 grand a week. I don't care. Like, there was like things that you'd hear murmurings of that type of stuff and I'm sitting there just thinking, I just don't understand this. It's mad. And players just like not training, training when they want, intensity weren't really high. And, for whatever Harry's trying to do, it's like it was the, the players just never talk about buying into it, just weren't weren't having it at all. And that team ended up getting relegated, right? But I knew. I remember I used to travel in with Bobby Zamora because we were from a similar area in the car. I remember being in the back of the car one day after about a month. I remember Bobby. Was he your driver? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. All right. He was next to us. He was in the back of the car. Yeah, he was, oh, you're you're right, 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 right. <laughs> and then uh, he's got. Um, he just started laughing, and I was like, I, I hadn't said anything. And I said, like, oh, "You're right." He said, uh, "He said, what the fuck are you doing here?" Like, because he could see my body was shut down. I was yeah. injuries. I was having to like blast plasters my way through games and ma manage myself through training sessions. And he was like, "Well, why are you doing this?" But it's like a boxer, and he said that one last fight. You think there's one, there's something else in there for you? you can go and play your last season in London, back home. Your kid, my kids were of an age where they understood football a bit more. Yeah. I want them to see that. And then obviously my missus got got ill at the time, and so that was like compounded everything, and it just kind of just it all falls down then. I bumped so. into you, remember? I bumped into you at Wembley, not that you were ever going to listen to me. And you're on about leaving United. I said, well, whatever you do. I said, why don't you treat yourself and go abroad for a year? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. even I, was, I think I said France or something. I said, I said, I'd be wary of going to another English team because obviously what you've done at United and you obviously didn't listen to me. <laughs> uh, because sometimes, yeah, they, they listen, but there are decisions you make because, you, again, you spoil it. Again, leaving United was always going to be stepped down, wasn't yeah, yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I actually was talking to clubs abroad because that was my first thing I wanted to go abroad. Um, but obviously, personal circumstances, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Yeah. That, so. yeah. But yeah, no, I, I wish I'd definitely... Were the injuries kicking in then, Re? Was it to a point where you think, you know something, I probably can get through this the way it is. I could feel it. It's like me with my ankle. I felt, you know what, I could probably get through this for another year. Was you in that place where you said, yeah, I could get through this, it would be OK? Yeah, yeah. I did genuinely think I'd be fine, I'd get through it. Manage, Harry spoke to him, I'll manage your games, you ain't got to train every day, just mm. make sure you're ready for the games. And that's, I thought, yeah, I could do that easily. But you, you was at United with me. Like, I used to walk in on a Monday after a game or Sunday, I used to walk in a... The lads used to take the piss out of me. Because I'd be so bent over yeah. and I'd take tablets. I remember that at West Ham when we went off first game. West Ham, they used to, used to have that yeah. problem. You had to get rid of a car, didn't you? Because yeah, like, yeah. the car was bad for your back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, the car was. <laughs> 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 it's raw dry. Yeah. 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 I heard that with um, Rodwell as well. At Everton, yeah, yeah. he used to be literally sitting on the floor and, you know, he used to get mm. a lot of hamstring problems. But you change so everything. That, you know what yeah. I mean? Your bed, you change your mattress, everything. You try to, to work it out. I used to remember the cushion I used to walk about with. Yeah. Sit on a cushion to make sure my back posture was right. But when I hit 30, I remember Giggsy, I used to do yoga, didn't he? Yeah. And I remember Giggsy used to say to me, when you hit 30, your body changes and then you'll start feeling things you never knew you had in, in your body. And I, I never really took it seriously. At the moment I swear I hit 30, I was getting injuries that I never, like little spasms <coughs> in my calves. I started doing yoga with, with, with uh, Ryan and, um, and Karas. But it was like, from 30 years old, I was always constantly like wary of injuries at that time. Go back to the start of your career here, because you would, I remember obviously, you came to Old Trafford once, you got pumped 7-0 with West Ham, <laughs> and they were singing Rio for England. Yeah, and it, was, it, was, it was unbelievable. It was brilliant. Um, and you were, at that time... You were laughing as well. <laughs> <laughs> you had, obviously, you had a mistake in you. You were young, you took risks. Um, and then, was it the move to Leeds that completely changed your sort of mindset on seriousness around defending? Or was it... Because when you came to United, mm. I always remember the words you said to me before every single game, nothing down our side. Mm. And it was a serious nothing down our side. 
I don't imagine the young Rio Ferdinand. So where have you gone from that sort of, if you like, carefree centre back that's, if you like, giving a goal away or two? you know, every other week, mm. to being... <laughs> 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 I, don't, I don't remember giving away too much stuff. Oh, like no, that. That. Well, <laughs> Sorry, but no. you know what I mean? Fucking coffee! No, <laughs> <laughs> too, this serious defender who's got, coming up to me before a game, who's been at United for ten years, saying nothing down our yeah. side. When's that change come? When but... he had to play with you. <laughs> <laughs> I think when I was at West Ham, got, I remember I, I'm come, used to pick me up. I'm coming from an estate mm. where I've got all my mates going, "What's going on every day? Like, oh my, match of the day. Are you on tonight?" Like, so all I'm thinking about is impressing my, yeah. my mates, really. And that would be just doing skills against a forward. <laughs> we could we could get beat three-one, but I've done a bit of skill. And I go to my mates, "Watch <laughs> on match of the day. They must be going to show it." I'll tell you. <laughs> like, and they wouldn't. But it was that was my mindset. It was all about if I, I play well, if I'd done a bit of skill on a forward, or if I'd come out with the ball four, three or four times in a game. And obviously, as if Harry's championing that for, with me, yeah. and he's going, "This is brilliant. You're like a Rolls Royce. You're this, you're that, and the other." So I'm not, I'm not getting that kind of defensive tutoring mm -hmm. consistently, other than the odd bit here and there, one v ones in training. And so, and, and and to be fair, I'm getting applauded in the media for being a bit different as a centre half. So I'm thinking, I'm doing everything right here. Mm. And then I went to Leeds, and I remember when I signed for Leeds, I was, they were talking about you know, the agents and that talk, negotiating the contract money. And I, I said, can I just speak to the manager? And I rang him and said, are you just going to coach me how to defend? Just coach me more, be David aggressive. David O'Leary. Yeah, David O'Leary. And to be fair, he was true to his word. Him and Roy Aitken and um, Eddie Gray drilled me constantly on the training pitch. And obviously going from West Ham to Leeds, who are playing Champions League football, the stakes are higher. You, you take it a bit more seriously, your defensive responsibilities, and you start looking at the game a bit different. And that was part of the development, but also... Coming to United was a, just a totally different... I'm coming in there with you guys who have won, like, four, five, six Premier Leagues at that time. And I'm sitting there, like, on zero trophies at all, let alone Premier League medals. And so I'm just sitting there thinking, like, how can I get better? And I remember I, I, we played West Brom. I don't know if you remember. I played West Brom, and I tried to do a couple of, like, cross-field passes early just to show people, you know what I mean? <laughs> what, Good what you money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then... They got cut out and Kumas hit the bar twice or once and I think almost scored the other one. And I remember coming at half-time and the manager roasted me, unloaded. Like, I don't know who you think you are. Give it to someone who can pass that ball. And so you just like, you, you kind of take down your ego a little bit and you're like, what's your responsibility in this team? There's so many better players with the ball who are there to create chances. I ain't got to do all the, what I was doing before. Yeah. Just be good at defending. Mm. Just, and so that's where that, that I used to always short and sharp little comments like that to you. Nani was, I know I always say certain things, Waz are the same, but like our side, you go tight, don't worry what's behind you. That's my responsibility. Like, like little things like that, telling you, but also making sure that I'm ready in the game as well. Do you prefer how centre-halves play now? Because with you being a technical centre-half, you know, when you say about the boom, boom, mm. like, because you like to play. Yeah, but it's Busquets saying right. boom, boom. If it's Busquets yeah. saying it, you kind of take that. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of take it. But it's, it's, I look at it now, my, my boys play, your, your boys play now. And the risk they take, man, mm. I'm sitting there thinking, yeah. wow, one of my kids is a goalkeeper. And what he has to do on the ball, I didn't have to take the responsibility like that as a player yeah. on the pitch. But do you think it would have elevated you even higher as a player, the way they, they, they play now, receiving the ball in, in the six-yard box, mm. being almost playmakers from the back? Stepping you, into midfield. You, you, yeah, because yeah. you, I think you've said in the past, I think you've mentioned this maybe with Ericsson a little bit with England, where yeah, you almost felt like that. you were stopped from yeah. being what you could have been. Mm. But that, was that also at, at Manchester United as well, what you've just said yeah, about yeah. Ferguson? Yeah, so Alex Ferguson was the same. I think um, Glenn Hoddle was in, always encouraging me to run out with the ball. He said to Incy, and I, Incy was one of my heroes as a kid, he said, Incy, you step back when we was on the ball. And I was like, Jesus. Like, mm. So the confidence I had doing that, and I think that if I was given that confidence by a manager and the structure of the way they're playing now, yeah. maybe I would have been better or I'd have got a bit extra percentage out of my performance. But I think I, I, I learned over time that I used to approach a game and go into it, what can I do with the ball? Which was wrong for a centre-half to be thinking. That it was more, my mindset was, in the end, when I got to United, was it grew into being, right, clean sheets, defend, defend first. And then the natural ability would just do what it's got to do, but I have to really focus on my defensive responsibilities to be as good as I can be. I always say that because we all describe players. I always think all of us as players, we always get put in a box, you know, of like you're this and you're known as like a ball playing centre back and then not so much a defender, as you just mentioned there at West Ham. 
But I actually think it was a little bit different than that. Whereas the managers you had, you'd basically had centre back. Who did you used to? Who did we pass to at centre back? You're giving it to your full back. Yeah. You're giving it to, to midfield. But you were a great defender mm. and didn't get enough, maybe uh, credit for being a great defender. Mm. Maybe because the narrative was about bit, maybe saying. being different because there wasn't so many ball playing defenders then. So that probably took over. It was the first mm. thing that came to mind. But. It's like we were talking about Marcus, I don't keep mentioning him, but sometimes you need people to kind of influence you as well. I remember I've always said this about Roy, when I signed, you were the captain, but I remember playing a ball to Gary in training, like a simple five, ten yarder, and you fucking went mad. And I'm sitting there going, what? He said, take some responsibility, pass it, don't just keep giving it a simple pass. You're not at Leeds and West Ham now. And I was, I was sitting there thinking, nice this guy. guy is like... <laughs> He's me and man. He's right. Like, he was but, right. He was right. Yeah. And, and I, I, I knew when you give the Gary, we want to give the Gary. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, I think, uh, just something, I always think <laughs> this. You know, just something, there was nothing worse than a defender at United. I don't know if it's like that at every club. I don't know if it's like that at every club now. But if you gave a goal away, are you responsible for giving a goal? You carried that, not just, for, yeah. you carried that for my bit. I might carry that for a few weeks. I'm like, I've got to have a few weeks now, mistake free, or else yeah. I'm on a rotter. Yeah, yeah. No, do you it's know true. what I mean? It's true. If you yeah. give a, that, that was the, how serious Treat, it was. Pride, yeah. it? That's yeah. pride, It's like defend. really bad for you to give a goal away or even have a part in Because you can't have people saying he'll give yeah. you something. Yeah. If Bruno yeah. carries on playing like that and he, he, yeah. you, you'd, yeah, I'm going to chase him down because he'll give us something. Because Shooter Pierce done that to me. Yeah. Shooter Pierce, another one who you look at, he's a hero, yeah. England player, legend, whatever. He's at Newcastle, end of his career, coming in at half time. You might have been with us at West Ham then. Coming in at half time, and he just shouted, he'll give us one. Yeah. Rio will give us one. I was like, <laughs> kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it gets into your head though, doesn't it? I remember going to centre half and you know when they do the press and they'd always leave it for the ball to come to me. Because you know they obviously <laughs> yeah. press the good centre half to yes. and I'd be like, oh for God's sake, you know then that you're the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. bad you're one. You're the one that they've been talking about. You're the main person in the meeting. Yeah, yeah. 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 You as the main focus of our meeting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Talk to us about the partnership with Vidic and mm. Obviously, for probably the best in Europe, I would imagine, for probably three or four seasons, that partnership, I would say. Um, how, who was the most important person in that partnership? Difficult for one for you to answer, but... I think we both needed each other. Uh, Vida, I interviewed him a while for, for five, a little plug. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, it took an hour. Um, but um, he said, which I agree with, he said, like, he said... Nemanja Vidic isn't Nemanja Vidic without the relationship with Rhea. And I'd say exactly the same. Like, there's only certain, some players who probably attacking areas, midfield area, where you can go and do something on their own and just be that on their own. But I, I needed him as much as he needed me, definitely. Mm. Like, we had such different makeup as players as well. He was like a, a more aggressive front foot, attack everything in the air, um, body on the line always. Um, and I was just a bit, I'd, I'd want to sweep, look after things behind him maybe and be a bit more of that security behind at times, still step in at times, whatever. But so complemented each other, different styles. But there may have been times when one of us was more important than the other at certain periods maybe. But I think in the main, I think we definitely needed each other, 100%. Because he was like, uh, when he first signed, do you remember when he first signed? <clears throat> that just think sound like, he needs to go back. <laughs> he yeah. was so bad in training. I remember him in a game at Anfield. Uh, and him and Ever were both on the same side. I think it might have been the game where O'Shea scored in the last mm. kick of the game. I think it might have been that one. And his, I think it was Bellamy. Bellamy against Vidic in that first sort of first half. We were attacking the cop first half. It was like, I remember Ferguson at the side, because I was right-sided centre-back, so I wasn't far from the bench. I remember Ferguson, like, not screaming, almost like trying to like, just calm mm. him down. He was like... He was an emotional man, oh, wasn't he? He was a really himself. emotional guy, like, and he got... He, he was either all, it was never too high, but he could always go too low, like the bottom of the sea. Like he was like you'd, a bad pass or a bad performance at early stage of his career. It, it, like you say, hangover for the rest of that week. He, he wouldn't talk to people. Up, yeah, and so um, it took him a while to, to get through that. But you remember he's come from, a, from the Russian league. Exactly. Mm. He had that time to adapt. And I remember why is I coming? Why is the plan against me training? So like he's terrible. He can't play for us. <laughs> I uh, so always like, send him, and Patrice, the same about Patrice, send these two, but how have we signed them? And then he's playing against Louis Saha, um, Rooney, Cristiano, I think Tevez might have been there. Yeah, then. Like, yeah. Playing it them four in training every day, imagine, that's, that's difficult. It's a test, yeah. Harder than most yeah. games on a Saturday. So, but what I would say is that, that 
grit and determination and that perseverance to better himself. He used to look at his body and say, wow, look at the state of me. Wow. Like he, he used to question his body, body, question lot, his yeah. body all the time, his yeah. physique, and then he went to go in the gym. He wasn't the biggest, was he? No, he had massive and, legs. The, the reason I say that, I remember bumping into him on holiday and just, like, didn't know him really, mm. but, like, on, on, the, on a beach somewhere. Like Phil. <laughs> 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 I was surprised. I always had him mm. down. I was like this big yeah. man, and he wasn't frame wise. So was aggressive. He? Yeah. So yeah. aggressive. He used to. I mean, how many times he broke his nose? Yeah. He had the worst nose in the game, right? But you come in and go. It's the beauty. You're truly. Yeah. You come in and then you go. Like, I'd, you'd be laughing and going, "What's wrong with you?" Like, go up and protect it. But he said, "I just see the ball." Yeah. <laughs> Head butt yeah. the back of people's heads. Like he was like a lunatic. But he was wow. a great, great lad. player. Great, <laughs> great, great lad. Great lad. Great lad. Great lad. Great lad. Great lad. Was he the best player that you played with? Would best you say? Partner. Yeah. Be it got the best out of me. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, my partnership with Soul. Yeah. I enjoy playing that because. Again, he was front foot aggressive, quick, could cover the channels as well. Um, Sol was a top player. He don't get talked about yeah, that. Yeah, well. you're right. Like sometimes yeah, yeah. when you're talking about top he defenders, was, he, was, yeah. he was like a really, like that period, especially like from, what was it, 98 onwards for a few years, he was flat. Oh, 2001, probably a bit after that with the yeah. Yeah, when he went to was, Arsenal. Yeah, when he went to Arsenal, yeah, 2001 maybe. But even like. the last years at Spurs, he was like, you lot were trying to get him to Arsenal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, turned to Man United. And yeah. I was sitting there thinking, right, I'm, I'm coming up. Don't let him go there. <laughs> yeah, was but he was. Um, but my my relationship. Some people you gel with. John Terry was good, but it wasn't wasn't as good as with Sol Campbell. I felt like we had a really good partnership. Was be hard Sol's to play against. Sol's got the pace though, yeah. That would have been. Would that have worried you playing with someone like JT because of the pace? No, nah, because Nemanja wasn't the quickest. He was quick enough, mm. but Nemanja was just so aggressive on that first ball. Yeah. You know what I mean, the ball used to go in and it used to be like, he'd come out and in the end, you build that reputation where people they end up don't going near you. They end up playing out wide. How many times have Kevin Davis and people like playing against Pat or playing against you sometimes? Yeah. And I used to think, we used to think like, wow. But that's the that reputation being built over time. And he I was, think with Solo as well, I, 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 he is one of those centre-backs that doesn't get mentioned enough. And mm. I think he feels it, doesn't he? When you look at his Instagram stories, yeah. he's always... <laughs> 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 is he on Instagram? Yeah, yeah, is yeah. it? Yeah. He's, he's always one of those things, isn't he? Yeah, he lets you know now. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget how quick it was in the second half. He's top speed. Chart, yeah. <laughs> I see that one, the speed was funny, that one. But he was yeah. like, Sol was like, yeah. he was top, man. So he was like, tough, yeah. Like, he was top, man, so he's like, tough, yeah. Really you got in and around him as a forward, you, you, you're, you're losing the ball. If his body gets in or close to you, you're not... You used to have two masseurs on on one on each leg. Wow. He was massive, wasn't he? Yeah. Two of them just <laughs> on my leg like that. <laughs> <laughs> at the same time. Did you enjoy yeah. your time at England when you look back? Um, no, I don't know. I, don't, mm. it, I think if you ask the players now if they enjoy the time of England, they all go, ah, oh, we can't. You speak to them, Declan, all them boys, like, I can't wait to get there. Yeah. I weren't like that with England. No. I wasn't like chomping at the bit to go away with England. It was you loved it when you were there and you played the game, but I didn't like. I didn't enjoy totally the the environment. It weren't a, a perfect environment. Even when I first went there, it was really very much like Man United over there, everyone else there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then it became a little bit more inclusive after that. Why was that anyway? Because you used to get down early and leave early, and we're all sitting there like on our starters. I felt like with them, like, with the Man United guy, because it was all young. It was you and Phil. It was and, seven or eight. Was it growing up with each other? We just skulls. You know, yeah, it was, it was you lot all together. We were always early. It, 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 yeah. People always say this Liverpool Man United. It was never it that, was no, it? No, no. It was Man United. Because there were a lot of the guys in there. I remember 98, wasn't it? E Egor, that's called Ego. <laughs> I always remember, they get down to dinner early. Yeah. And also, when you, when you, you know, like, a, and you're in a dressing room, you're an hour and 15 minutes before the game, the manager gives the team, you start getting dressed. They'd all be dressed in five minutes. No, and, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you think, that, and then when they leave for dinner, we'd say, the, fucking what? There was a thing, <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying to you, is you talk yeah. about the standards of getting ready early. Being yeah, yeah. early, getting on the, we were first on the training pitch. Well, you said we were first in the canteen, by the way. We were first on the training pitch as well, by the way. So it, it was, it was Stretching. just, yeah. We were honestly, we would be thir being first and getting there and getting it done was really important to us. Do you think it was difficult to leave your club hat at home? Do you know what I mean? Like, did you come into camp doing Man United stuff? Do, it, we, do you know what I mean? Instead of all, I remember there were seven or eight of us, Jill, mm. in there. That at times there could be me, um, Beck, Scolzi, Teddy Sheringham, Coley, Nicky Butt. Phil, um, Wes. Phil, Wes. You know, we could, we could, you know, we could have, we could have seven or eight in there, and we were like brothers. We literally like grew up with each club, other. Yeah. So you come, you get picked, and you obviously like you, you know, you knock on each other's door before you go down. And you sit together. It's, no one was telling us that it was anything different. Mm. When I look back now, when you think about cohesiveness in a team, you think about the impact that would have had mm. on mm. others. Even though we were young, by the way, we were 22, 23, 24. Yeah. We weren't like. 
you know, we weren't the senior players in the dressing room or anything like that. If you weren't all top players, you'd have been hated. I reckon yeah. you, everyone would have been going, look at them fuck. Look at them, yeah. yeah, like, yeah. Been, That's like, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't, you can't, but you like all top players, it's like, especially like Scolzi, like, everyone's yeah. like, going, fuck, how good is he like? But yeah. You couldn't hate you because you were that good mm. and you were winning, obviously. It was just like, why are they like that? But I don't I mean, think we were like sort of sat there slagging off the other players from no, the no, clubs no, or no, anything no. like that. We weren't like, no, it was just, just we sat to together. Engage. Yeah. Remember, we're all, we're all like right, intrigued, the, 90, the, the, the class of 92, you know, you're sitting there with the crowd and you're all like robots there, you know, just mm. doing, just it's winning just, machines. Yeah, but, but you know what That's I think what about why like, we'd done the under-21s together, didn't we, all mm. different people, but... I can't remember if Man United players actually no, no, no. to be fair. Did, did you? you? No, no. no they you, missed it. you never really played that, did you? I played, I played actually, 18 man. games for United and then played for England. So you'd oh. never played for England wow. at any level? I played under 18. OK. We played with Sol. I think that's where it helps you, doesn't it? You yeah, sort yeah. of get we're, to know each other. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, that's why this group of players of England yeah, now, yeah. I think yeah. they're so good, because they've all come through. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, it was only me, you and Frank that came through together, wasn't it? Uh, 21s. 21s. And yeah, but you had like Keir and Dyer was there. Kieran, yeah, just yeah. different people, wasn't he? Just floating mm. about different mm. clubs. Right, what, what did you think when Rio first came to United? <laughs> Obviously, we knew he was going to be a good player. It's obviously rumours stuff coming true, and uh, yeah, we're obviously delighted that he was coming in. Yeah, but again, when you're talking about managers or coaches staff coming, obviously Rio comes in. The first thing you do as a player, isn't it? You go, let's see what you've got. Yeah, that's the first thing I do with any player, and you just hope the player will come in. And from a selfish point of view, you go, let's let's hope he makes us better. Of course, but then you do the ups and downs like any other like any other player, and you you try. Hopefully, you try and help the player settle in. Because you came out at a difficult period, didn't you? What, what year did you arrive at United? 2000? 2002. 20, 20, uh, 2002, yeah. So After won, the World Cup. So we won the league in 2002. You hadn't won the league for two years. Yeah, awesome. and then when you didn't win the league for three years. You, the first year you well, won, you won you, the league the first year, didn't you? My first year, first I year you won the league. Huge pressure because you hadn't won the league. Yeah, but then well, we yeah, yeah, you'd won the league. But you won it for three years after that, I yeah. don't think. When it between sort of 2004. Did you win the league year before? Arsenal that? won it in 2002 and then mm. Man United won it in 2003. Yeah, but then we didn't win it for three years. So, so your first year you won the league? Yeah, my first year we won it. And, and that was the, probably the biggest pressure of any, any of my time at Man United because I was coming and thinking they're on the back of winning so many things consistently. And I was like, massive money they'd spent on me. Mm. And I was like, what? If we don't win it now, all, everyone's looking at me. It's my fault. That's how I was oh. thinking internally. We were, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like, we obviously won the league that year and it was like a big like, relief, to yeah. be fair to me, because... But I needed the help. I remember we played against, I think it was Southampton away, we drew. And it was the back end of the season. And in my mind, I was like, fuck, we fucked it. We've blown it. <laughs> but, but I remember hearing you two in the shower going, that's a point game there. Good mm. point, good point. Well, that'll, that'll be, that's all right. Not what we wanted, but it's the point. And that, that it really helped me change. That's what we talk about United now. Where are those people that the newcomers are looking to to get those little mm. little nuggets where it helps you stay on track? They're, they're, not, they're not there at Mentioning the Mentioning them two in the shower and then little nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> You know you got United and everybody, United's got this kind of mystique about it's a United and the winning machine and everything. When did you realise this is the place, bro, this is pressure, this is it, every game? Because I'm, what I remember of United is to, to just to try and beat them, you know, you, you feel like unbelievable. And you've come in as, as a centre half, it's coming in to solidify everything. When did you realise, Jesus Christ, man, this is the place? I think just when I walked in the training ground, it weren't a match is walking in the training ground and seeing all these guys sitting there. And in my head, I'm just counting how many Premier League titles they've all got. I've got zero wow. next to my name. I'm just thinking, I've got to impress these first. I have to get over that first hurdle, which is these guys. Go out and train well. The, the most pressure I felt at United, I swear to you, was my first training session. So who um, did you replace, Rio? Who would you have come in for? Who was... Uh, Lauren? Who? Uh, Lauren? Lauren, Lauren, Lauren Blanc. He was there. Still so I asked there. for the number five shirt and the <laughs> gaffer went... Lauren Blanc's going to have to wait a year. I have to wait a year. <laughs> but he, just, Lauren was there, and I kind of come in for him, really. And yeah. me, me and Mikel played for the Mikkel. first season. Is that right? Mm. Mikel, yeah. What so, number was your first season, then? Six. Mm. And he stayed six? All, all he stayed six, and then I, when he left, I, I went five. five. But it was the, the, the pressure of the players was the biggest thing for me. You want to impress your, your, yeah. your teammates yeah, and show do, them, yeah. like, you, ju like, justify why they That's a lot of money at the yeah. time. Yeah. 
So it was but you also want to impress a, a new player coming in as well. Yeah. You, you, Rio's coming in, big reputation, big money. You got, yeah, you want them to think you're a good player as well. It goes hand in hand. Yeah, that's what I, I think that always happened. And I, the manager was good at that. Finds a big player every summer. Yeah. So everyone else goes, like Definitely. you say, we, I need to show him why I'm here. Really important that was for us. Why not management? Why not? Why punditry? Personal circumstances. I, w I was doing my, my badges. I wanted to be a, a coach manager, 100%. Me, Wayne, Michael, Shazy, they're all, they've all done management now. I was on the same courses as them. Obviously, personal situations at home happen and it just like, I had to, if you're going to be a manager, you're there like 24-7. Right. Yes. Like there's yes. no time off. I've seen it with Stevie and, the, and, and Frank, the little time I've had with them. Like the change from being a pundit to being a manager, their phone's never off their ear. They're, they're not really fully engaged because mm. they're probably thinking about a million other things. And my kids needed me to kind of be like 100% with them. Like I'm, I'm at work, but I'm contactable. I'm, I can still be there. I can mm. still get to parents' evenings and stuff like that. Where as managers, you know that mm. they don't, they miss all that stuff. So um, I had to make a, a real quick decision. It wasn't even something I had to think about really. I just don't, I'm not doing that. So, mm. and punditry, you're still involved. We're, we're all doing it, we're all really enjoying it. This is what you'd be talking about with your mates in the pub. Do you love it, the pundit? I mean, I, I obviously, this is what we all do. I, I do, I mean, do you genuinely love it and being at the games and talking about football? Yeah, I, I'll just, it's, as I said, I'll be doing this anyway. My pals began to games. Like, those of my mates come up for the game at the weekend. I'll be on that on that train or on that, when that mm -hmm. minibus with them. But, no, I love it. And we, we get to see it first hand and we're still close enough that you get to smell it and feel it mm -hmm. a little bit. So, uh, I, I love it. And the week leading up, prepping for the games and stuff, getting that little, little bits of information that, that no one's seeing and stuff. And yeah, I, I, I love it. And just seeing the way the game's changed. Yes. Do you know what I mean? And I think I'll just love it to be a bit more like American sports though, where the clubs are more open. They want you in there. They understand that, that the, what the media means and represents and you, you're part of the game rather than they treat the media a little bit like the clubs, like you just stay there, just keep you off Where, where do you bit. think it should go to then sort of punditry? What, what, what type of like, uh, access should we be allowed and would you have liked that as a player? No, I just think maybe loosen up the players, but we weren't like that. We were, if you look back at it in interviews of us, we were a disgrace. <laughs> like, speak yeah. for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were just no, so yeah. like, one dimensional, yeah. just like answer the question, bog standard answer, what everyone you've seen over the years. Yeah. yeah. But you look at the Americans and that, they're such open books, do you know what I mean? And they're just, they're quite, they're, there aren't many boundaries of them. They say what they feel at the mm -hmm. time. I'm not, I'm not having that. Well, you've yeah. said that about me, but I'd, I'd like them conversations. Yeah. Like, I've been critical of Harry Maguire in the past in a Man United shirt in England. I've given the praise that he obviously deserves, but in a United shirt at times, I've, I've, I've picked at his game and from a, from a tactical perspective or his individual uh, performance. And I know he's not going to be happy with that because I wouldn't be happy with people looking at my game, but I would, I would love him to go, real. what's that about? Like, and have that conversation. Yeah. I know it's difficult because there's a lot of pressure, but... I think the clubs sh shouldn't see us as as the enemy. Or, I don't think the enemy is too strong, but as we're, we're not trying to get a story out of them. We want to enhance the game, enhance the product, and I think by, by getting players to be a bit more more human mm. and seeing them a bit stripped back would be really a good. I, I think in the role that we do, when if you interview someone, and you sort of I wouldn't say build a relationship or you, you're seeing things from their point of view. You can't help but when you're then speaking about them or that team. You just warm to. I don't yes. think you tell lies or mm. say one thing one week and something the next. But you kind of, but warm to see. Think, oh, I've got a. I want him to do well. Yes. I want that team to do well. I want yeah. 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 the goodwill. Yeah. 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 When you know someone a bit better, you do think better of them, don't you? Yeah. But yeah, I, I don't know. Are, are we asking too much? I don't know. Like, but you, I, the reason that I see it in American sport where there's a lot more access and there's a lot yeah. more kind of understanding of what the media represents and what it means to In America, think, it's mad, isn't it? They sit with the players who've just yeah. come out of the show. Yeah. Oh, it's unreal. Yeah. Yeah. NFL, well, nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> but really, I, 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 nuggets. I, I agree with you, obviously, but I also then, just that you mentioned it, when you step back into our careers, there was a lack of trust. Yeah, yeah. And why would these players now not have that same lack of trust for people who are, at times, criticising them on a weekly basis? Why would they be different than we were? But I think do you think about, say, for instance, match today, someone criticised you, the last thing that I would ever see any of us do is go and sit down with them after and say, let's have a chat about no, it. That's, yeah. no, you know what I mean? We wouldn't, we wouldn't we? Got, when we were playing, did we not completely <coughs> criticise no, we, yeah, yeah. we, we must have done. But we did, Roy, but we probably didn't, wouldn't have then gone and sat with that person for probably half yeah, an hour but, after. Yeah, it, but, yeah I, mean? I get that, but you also wouldn't have been getting people to ring him up like yeah. your agent and go, oh, no. hey, you've been a bit harsh yeah. tonight. No, yeah, so you've got to get the balance yeah. right. Yeah, you've got to take the criticism. Hey, you don't have to be pals with somebody. But like Rio said, and, and it happens, it's happened to one or two here, 
when you have been critical of a player, clubs get in touch through yes. the media yeah. to get yeah, in touch yeah, with you to yeah. say, yeah. you go, can you ease oh, down? or can you go, go, yeah, go easy, or can you give a, a lad a bit of praise? And you're like, no, you try and be fair to everybody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, but that's social media, isn't it? And well, I think of course. In America, or do they have a bit of a positive spin? Like, if you say something, they always focus on the negative, don't they, sometimes? So players then aren't as open in the interviews, but I think in America, they do seem really positive. Like, oh, but they're, they're, they're yeah. media over there is... They're, they're on it, and they've got more time, airtime as well. Yeah. And they are drilling down on everything on these players, like put more than what we do. Are you still tweeting, Neil? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. You weren't happy with that at the time, was you? Which one? When we first started. No, no. The change room. So I always remember he was the first person I ever knew on Twitter. Right, so we came in. <laughs> I think I was just about to retire. I always remember the gaffer going, "Fucking twat." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I not say the double C. <laughs> and I remember saying, that's what the dressing room was a change. Well, you know, we, were like, we were all like, Twitter, why would I even think, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. It was like madness. Yeah. You were the first person on it, you were the ad yeah. actual advocate of it at the time, said this is the new way, this is the way in which to sort of, if you like, communicate moving forward. Yeah, but that was the downside of the dressing rooms. You, you go back to, again, when we played, it sounds like it was 100 years ago, and I kind of had it, <clears throat> I remember not long before I left United, I kind of had a chat with some of the players where, no problem players going on Twitter, but it was when they were coming in after training, mm. where this idea of, I always thought it was really important in the dressing room where lads would have some sort of conversation. Mm. But it was, the phones were taken. I remember that meeting, I remember that meeting. Remember that meeting. Remember that meeting. Oh, remember that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> lads were playing games, you're like, oh, it, it was the right message to the wrong guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fletch, it's not Fletch. Yeah, yeah, no, no. He was on his... He was on his phone. He was on his phone. He was on his phone. PSP. No, it's on his phone. What did you do? Do you remember? What did you do? What happened, Roy? No, I did, again, I was trying to make the point about... And I think the team were having a difficult spell. We hadn't yeah. won in a week. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to make the point to the players, don't forget what it's about. And that would just, again, sometimes you get it right, the timing or whatever. I thought I was trying to do right. And a lot of players at the time, it was certainly going through a phase where a lot of players were on their phones in the dressing rooms. I think, was this Fletcher's phone rang when I was chatting? Was that what happened? Well, no, you, you oh. walked in and he was on his phone. On his phone, right, well, yeah, well, there you go. And it switched you, and you just, then you was went. That, oh, you went. You I went. didn't go, lad. Oh, no, fucking no, you did. He was late as well, it was unbelievable. Oh. He was devastated. He covered well. <laughs> Obviously, you're trying to help a player. And you're, you're on about Fletch and setting examples. So I've got a young player in the dressing room, mm. Fletch. I've got loads of times for Fletch. Jesus Christ, no problem. But you, you're trying to put a, a marker on. Go. You're in the dressing room. There's a. T you know what I mean? You saw it early, right? You saw it early. Got it wrong, like. With that? No, 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 not that oh, one. Maybe, but at times at United, absolutely, of course, with, with drilling players. Uh, of course. But I, I think, most times I got it right. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, that's the whole point. If you keep like we heard it earlier, yeah. but when you're trying to set examples, or when Stuart Pearce was setting examples for me, yeah, sometimes you think they've got it wrong, but uh, the order you get, you go, maybe. Yeah. Do you remember Michael Michael Stewart? Yeah, Michael Stewart. Remember, yeah. You remember that one? Yeah. <laughs> what was that about? What, me with Michael? Yeah, do you remember? It was, you made sure you sit on the. Uh, the, the legend and, and do your leg swings before you go out to training. Oh, yeah. right. And um, okay. this is a young lad, Scottish international played every yeah, level. But he wasn't that quiet. Wait, he wait, he wait, was wait, mad wait. for the table tennis, remember? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you're making all these guys. No, no, like... no, no. He was, I'm not saying he was like a timid kid. He was right. like quite a yeah. open, he, he's actually quite an open uh, speaking guy now. But he is, he, absolutely. Um, he was there. I don't, know, I don't know what triggered you, but I remember hearing you say to him, like, I, could, I just came down the, the corridor and I could hear you going, You'll never make it, you. <laughs> you'll never make it. You'll be, you know, you, you'll be playing for a pub team, the Swan or something like that. In a couple of years, you carry on the way you are. I was and right. He ended up in Hibs. and hats, that's what he played Confidence for. Confidence was on the floor. Right. No, no, but I was trying to motivate him. We started the conversation. And he beat me at the table tennis, yeah, I remember. Right. He that's was mad for the table tennis. That's what Man United did. Yeah, but we started, yeah. when we started talking about United, about United needing that. They yeah. need that, whether you're right or wrong. You do need that. And <laughs> obviously, you've seen where it is in United's dressing room now. You've got, like, we are talking about a player. And, like, he seems to be, like, you're very worried about him. He needs that. Yeah. He needs that in the dressing room. It reminds me of, uh, Rio, you made the point, it reminds me of the stuff at United, I know we keep going about you, but the great thing at United at the time, you were about coming in and table tennis, 
Everyone was competing. Oh, man. It was a competition. So if you were injured, you'd come back from injury, you'd play a hockey or okay, table yeah. tennis. Remember, lads would be yeah. fighting over the table tennis. Like, you used to have table tennis before training. Lads would be fighting. Michael used to throw bats yeah. at me all the time. I'm telling you. I used to have table tennis before training, but it was that, it was that environment. Yeah. And then five aside or the boxes, you were on edge all the time. Yeah. And that's what I think certainly you worry have these clubs, have United got that at the moment? No. Because they're turning up for games, and afterwards you're going, did they see him up for it? Did they have the end? Like when you when you sit there and talk about a team going, what about tactics and players having bad games? But you look and go, they didn't look up for it. They didn't mm. look. They, they've not turned up. They didn't have the energy. Yeah. Go, you're in trouble. You're in trouble if you're not on the edge all the time. Imagine but, losing a game in training. Remember that used to be oh, like losing a game in training. God, in. Really just be absolutely like you, that your, your day's done. It's absolutely, finished. Yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. all day long. Yeah. 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 I mean, Jesus, the arguments over five aside. Oh. The, the I used to think the players got more wound up in them five aside yeah. than yeah. Yeah. the yeah. actual yeah. game. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. tell you who the worst one ever is, Farrell Williams. Farrell, yeah, she's funny. Worst one ever. We used to play young the old on a Friday. Remember, I know. Go back to the old days. They'd be kicking. Look, the games the next day. We'd have the benches. Fabian be up front and we'd be kicking. Yeah. Long yeah. Like the I'm game's tomorrow. Yeah. Fabian was a striker. Yeah. He's actually a better striker than the bookies. <laughs> no. But you needed that though. Like, I thought yeah. it was always hey. that. Like, if, you did, if the, the training was that. up on a Friday, yeah. they weren't that, that, that zip in the training and that grit in the training on Friday. You used to think going into the game, we're going to be at it. Let's finish on the golden generation. Mm. Wow. Why do you look at me? I'm Irish. They were great. I don't care. Okay. <laughs> Calling generation. A team that was. A, it was Jamie in that. Ashley Cole, you pick any other partner, Sol Campbell, John Terry. I was right back. Cara was in the squad. <laughs> Bex. You were skiing. Stevie. <laughs> Bex, Stevie, Frank, Scolzi. Could have been Rooney Carrick and Owen. Well. Rooney and Owen. Okay, no, yeah. team. Do you think we got the match? Do you think it was a case of other teams were better, or do you think it was a case of that we didn't deliver what we should have done? Brazil were better than us. Hundred. You go through Brazil's team. Name their team when they beat us in that in uh, the World Cup. Their front three was Ronaldinho, Rivaldo, Ronaldo, <laughs> Cafu, and Roberto Carlos fullbacks. Uh, they were they were Gilberto midfield. They were un un unbelievable team. We were, t we were kind of, it almost tarnished us, that name. Do you know what I mean? It brought a, lot, a bit of pressure. Expectations were probably a bit higher. France's team then was a good team, top team. Do you know what I mean? So we were the golden generation. We had, we had some really, really good individuals, top individuals. But I don't think we probably reached our potential because of the, the way we were put together as yeah, a team. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was, that's the only real negative I see about that team. It's all almost like, what could we have been if we were actually put into a formation that actually benefited or that made them players play the best they can? Like you say, rigid 4-4-2. Mm. Like, and you've got other teams bringing players into midfield, Rivaldo dropping in with Ronaldo, <coughs> mm. and wondering why we can't get close to him. But if you were turning up Rio, you know, we've had this chat with lads who've played for England before, and a lot of them say a bit like you, did you look forward to going? There was a bit of an element of, mm, no, mm. I'm not saying you didn't enjoy the games or the challenge. And you're on about the six, seven United lads sitting together. I know it might be a, a, a couple of years later. Did that certainly not help the group in terms of getting over the line in them tight games? Mm, maybe, yeah. For some of the England players, they didn't look forward to going away playing for their country. Mm. You know, maybe. even though, even though you, you name that Brazilian side and they were amazing, and you look at our side, I still believe that with the right manager, I don't know, probably with Glenn Odell, with the way that Glenn Odell could move things around and change the, the formation and that, I think that I would. If you're going to put a team up against that Brazil side, it would be that, that with, with someone like Glenn Odo at the helm. Because I think that as good as that team was, we had, I'd probably say, I don't want to say dig JMO out, but that's probably the goalkeeping, goalkeeper would have been the, probably the weakest part of our team there when you look at what we had from front, midfield and back. I think that we probably, with, if we had the right manager, that team does something. Because it's not the golden generation for not, we had, Everything in that in those teams. I think Glenn Hoddle, like you just mentioned him, I think it's a really good point. I think him lit going was probably one of the probably the biggest reason we didn't go on to the Kick on. Yeah, because you remember when we was in Tactically, the squad. Tactically, he would have done it. I think he was uh, unreal. He had us playing three at the back, mm. rotations from yep. back to front. It was like Telling people you. rolling inside the pitch. It was crazy. Wing back and and the McManaman playing for, or, or Bex at times playing out, out wide. Yeah. Not, not defensive players on the, on the, on the, the flanks. He was just, mm. he just saw the game in a different way. And at that time, 
obviously what happened with him, he leaves. Yeah. But I think we lost so much kind of um, forward thinking. One. Yeah, we missed one. You know what I mean? Glenn. And finally, on Sunday, <laughs> Liverpool come to Manchester United. The moment where you score. And Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice yeah, goal yeah. as well, really. It's a good goal. Can Got another badger you kiss. <laughs> <laughs> he kissed it. He kissed it. He kissed it. Oh, yeah. What do you, you think? Kissed What's the score? Life. Yeah. What's the game? What's the game look like to you? Oh. The problem with United, I don't know about you, so you don't know what's going to turn mm. up. Like even the other day when they, when they beat Liverpool the other day, I, I think Liverpool lost that game. Mm. Yeah. More than the, main cup, yeah, that game. the cup game. Yeah. So. I think Liverpool have got a bit between us, their teeth and there's a consistency with the way they're playing that makes them favourites, I think, even at Old Trafford at the moment. Um, but I'm going to go for a draw. Two, two. I'm going to go for a one-all. <laughs> I'm, I'm, really intri- I'm really intrigued by it because I think Liverpool, Liverpool probably don't have to, 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 to win the game, but... They, they, they can't lose that game. No. I think they, and, and they, might, huh? I think they have to win. You think, think they have I to win? I don't think on this title running, when you've got these three teams going for it, you can think that you can afford to just have a draw. And it's an away game, game. And we I saw... know they won't. I keep saying that. I know, but... I know, but you look at every game going, oh, they can't lose that yeah. game. <laughs> I think, think this weekend is really one of the biggest weekends of the running. I think all, te- all three teams are away. Mm. Uh, I think Man City goes to Palace in the early kickoff, which which you know won't, won't be easy. Twelve yeah. thirty kickoff. Arsenal go to Brighton. Brighton. Mm. They they were at Anfield last week. You know won't be an easy game. So I I, I think if one of them sort of drop points in the other two win, I we'll think it'll feel blood, like yeah. a real yeah. big yeah. sort of. Umph. And I think if Liverpool win at Old Trafford, I know Man United are in great form, but it's just it's you always it say about like when you were going for a title. Mm. You felt like if you won at Anfield, yeah, it I think there it. is that little bit of freedom at Liverpool. If you win at Old, if they go to Old Trafford and win, you're in the group. It's a big. Yeah. It, it yeah. Just, it's, it's, don't, Jamie. Will you be around? Will we see it? <laughs> in the next two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do you think? Do you think? Sorry, before you finish, yeah. do you think um, football now is better than when we played? They're all going to turn off. The fitter and technically and tactically better. Yeah. Whether it's more exciting to watch the odd game, but I think that, that was a disappointment last week, the City-Arsenal game. But generally, I think tactically, physically, technically, the game is a it's lot gone better. There, isn't it? I'd like I to think, say more 50-50. The, the, the worst yeah. thing about COVID was watching your own games back, weren't it? <laughs> you, thinking, you did that in COVID. <laughs> <laughs> no, but all the old games were on the, on the TV, yeah. weren't they? Yeah. When yeah. you look around and you think about what certain teams were like and, and, and what games were like, and it's just like... Everyone just kicking it long oh, and yeah, tackling. Yeah, yeah. But would I mean, you change it? I, yeah, no, I wouldn't change no, it. I like that. But I actually, yeah, yeah. I actually yeah. think the Premier League this year has been one of the best. I mean, the goals in the league this season is off the you, you can say something about the defending, but yeah. I think some of the games this season have been unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, no. Rio, brilliant speech. Cheers, thank, you. No, nice brilliant. Brilliant. thank you. Brilliant. Thank, you. thank you. Yes, Rio. I love you. Rio, it's scared to say, can you excuse us while we yeah, do Super Six? Oh, sorry, go on, I'll sit in the stands. Rio. He's scared of you. It's because of your sponsors. Go on. Respectful, isn't it? Yeah, all right, we'll do Super Six quickly. And then Super quickly. Great, OK, last week's yours. Gary, you got 11. Yes. Because Great. of me. Top, oh, top 20%. Got more. Oh, we, top 20%. We, Gary and Jill. Gary and Jill. Gary and Jill were a good point, actually. So Brady, I'm not on this Brady, podcast. Brady, we had a nightmare. Fantastic. Right, I don't know right. if, I'm a four. Four. Yeah, four. Yeah, I'm a four. four. It was the international break. He'd been travelling, but it just, we were all sorry about me. Yeah, we were out of sorts. Oh, the fact you didn't you know, have me. Yeah. Where were you right, eh? Um, <laughs> what day was it? Four points. I can't even remember. You haven't got an excuse. I have got an excuse. Well, you were abroad. It was the international break. You're on holiday. Yeah, I was abroad. Whereabouts? I can't remember. Um, we won't concentrate. I can't remember. See, I'm not right. even concentrating right. now. This, this week's score. This week's game. Gary, you go first. Yeah. Right, I'm going for this time. I'm going for this. Am I with yous or yous? You're with us. Who won? You need us. Yeah. Tony. Yeah. 2-1. Yeah. 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 Brentford's my team. Villa. Villa. had so many chances against United. Everyone has chances against United. Villa, you always get Villa right, Joe. 106. 106 chances in three games. Brentford had a lot of chances against United. That's their home. They're they're much stronger at home. Villa, Villa are very good at home. It's got to be Villa, hasn't it? You think? Watkins, is he Ollie Watkins playing? Yeah, but he's missing. Right, what does your heart say? Brentford. To win? You're in one of these little silly moods, I'm aren't not, you? We're getting to that stage of the season where you've got to really catch you. You've got to do some yeah, like, like do strange, strange yeah, things. Yeah, and do I don't something. mind that, but not, we don't have to do it on this game. 
So you don't you think that Villa will beat Brentford? I think like uh, dear two two. You I'm think Brentford would beat Villa? I'm just trying to just I'm trying to get points here, Jill. <laughs> I'm not sitting on the fence. I'm feeling like Brentford can do it. You know, Roy's going to just take charge anyway. No, I'm gonna. No, no, no. Come on. Just, just no, what do you again. think? Go on. I think Villa will beat them. Two nil. I'll give Brentford a Brentford goal. Brentford a goal, I was... Do you know, we, got, we could stick with 2-1, but then we're not going to catch up with them. Yeah. Not, but there's no point in going... We've got 3-1, so three we take one. the gamble, will okay. we? Just to... He loves a tree. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Who's faced on the Fulham one? Us. Fulham, Fulham are, are winning this all day. They're on the back of a shocker against Forest. Do you agree? No? Um, I think Fulham will win. I'm gonna say go on, Newcastle then. got big injuries. It's our oh, goal, they, they yeah. It's our goal. I think Fulham will win. Two. Yeah, I got Fulham as well. One, you got to score. Then. One then. Um, three two. Wow. Oh. I've gone big. Well, he's gone three two. Oh. No, no, no. Right? I'm not. No, I'm oh. just saying that it's, it's <laughs> up for conjecture. That, was, up a, for... that was a definite three two. That wasn't like a. Is it three two or sort of like a? That was three two. Three two. I'm going to imagine not doing three two now and it ends up three two. Let's just do it. Two one. Indecision on your side is embarrassing. Two two nil. But put it in. 2-0 Fulham, yeah? Of course. Okay, You're an indecisive right. unit. I'm not, but now you see that, I would have went 3-2. Yeah. I would have went 3-2. We're needing a weird win. I really hope that you don't went 3-2. There's no mini rolls. Where's the chocolate? We're needing a weird win here. It's your goal. Can we get mini rolls? Wolves, West Ham, honestly. 1-1 written all over. Yeah, we'll go 1-1. 1-1, 1-1. A West Ham win. West Ham, yeah. Jared Bowen away from home. I've got a strong feeling about these games. 2-1 West Ham. Yeah, I'm agreeing. What do you think, Roy? No, say something. No, no, I'll go with it, I'll go with it. I'm going to go 2-1 West Ham. Yeah. Hang on a minute. When, why am I saying that? Oh. Did you see the chances they missed? Like, That's he... a board now. Are you getting bored? No, I mean, look at this. Maybe the first don't finish it. Honestly, yeah. indecision. I think 2-1. Come on, on, go on two one West Ham. Oh, you said, yeah. 2-1. 2-1 yeah. yeah. two, 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 West Ham. Yeah. Right. Don't put people on the pressure West game. Just because you know what you want to do. I don't like two the way you're moving Arsenal. right now, bro. Just, you're moving... You're I not Arsenal moving win. right. Do you think... 2-0. Do you think 2-0, clean sheet? Yeah. Do you think? No one can get it at them, can they? They defended very well at the Yeah, I'll go with that. Yeah, 2-0. 2-0. Yeah, I'm up with that. No, Brian, it's 2 Arsenal. Do you think? Yeah. Yeah, OK, sorry. I think Arsenal... Do you think Arsenal will get a goal? If we can hold up um, City, we can hold up. Arsenal will get a few. You prefer our scores to yours, that's the problem. We haven't got a draw yet. jump ship. We haven't even got a draw yet. That's our problem. You ain't going to draw there, though, You're not going to Arsenal, Brighton. It's over then. If you draw there, it's over. No, they'll beat Luton, then they'll be happy. They'll take the draw down there. Yeah, go, you know, 2 0 is a good score. They can't draw that. He that's thinks it'll be a goal, draw. though. I don't think it's So they're going to win every single game? Is that what you're well, saying? That's not the game they can draw. I mean, you may be. Right away. I don't think that's the game they can drop points in. 3 1. They need them in the bank for when they go to Old Trafford you and to. to I go to. I go to. <laughs> I think Arsenal will get Arsenal. 2 or 3 1, Arsenal, yeah. yeah. Is this Liverpool's two or three three game left? 3 1. Go for Would you say? 3-1 yeah. then, Arsenal. 3-1, Arsenal. Yeah. Although, to be fair, yeah. I'm not happy. I know. This is going to be big, big yeah. I think. Like, big. Is this us? 2-1, Liverpool. Yeah, we've got 2-1. We, we won't Liverpool. be on the same page, yeah. yeah. They can't be on the same. 2-1, Liverpool. They can't be on the same. 2-1, Liverpool. Yeah, Liverpool to win, yeah. Liverpool to win. Do you not think it'll be bigger than that? I, I can't see it. Man United against Brentford the other day. I do actually think that'll be the score. I think it'll be a draw. Don't be boring. Don't copy us. I think it'll be a draw. Yeah, well, they're, 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 they're capable of copying us. I go 1-1. 1-1 in that game. We'll have to win it. I know they do. That's not a game to drop points, no. Gary. <laughs> <laughs> not that one. You know what? Chelsea, no, to be honest, it's a game that Liverpool that mustn't lose. Oh, we'll say Chelsea win that, you know? It's against the United side. The Palmer billion pound chances. bottle jobs will go to Sheffield United. <laughs> you know something? <laughs> Stop using these inflammatory quotes. <laughs> Do you regret that, or? No. No, it's a good said at the moment in time. Every time you say the TV. It's like the TV. Quote, it? it's like yeah. you say something, you don't expect it to get the traction it gets, you know what I mean? Well... Doesn't do you any harm, Didn't though, um, it? Is Pep come back at you? I'd hope so. Of course yeah. he did, yeah. Of course he did, yeah. Th that doesn't mean Pep's right. I know. No, I don't think Pep's right, right all the time. He's right about yeah. absolutely no, everything. No, I didn't say he was right, but I was wondering I've, if he'd, I've watched like, Man City for the last 10 years. I don't think I've ever criticised him once yeah. or any of the players. And then they all get a bit upset. Yeah. All yeah. a bit delicate, aren't they? Yeah. What's the score? We never got cri What's the we get criticised when we were players. Big, yeah. big, big. And what did we do? Got on with it, right? Yeah. yeah. We got on it's with it. It's social media, that's why. Do you Chelsea. think these will get a lot? We got. It's your goal. It's your goal. Your first. Uh, we go. 
Thank you very much. Oh, Chelsea, Chelsea. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, Chelsea. 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 Start again. Three one Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. Three one to Chelsea. Three one Chelsea. Well, I was going to say that. I was going to say three nil. It's getting to that point whereby you better can see. Uh, start exactly. bringing that two one. Twenty two point one lead. Two one. Twenty two point lead. Done three two ones. We just great. Thank you. That's super six. Well done, Ben. Well done, Ben. I think one of them will be a nil nil. I know it's gone now. Well, I'm just Your party language is just a name that, isn't it? No, 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 you have to do sideways, Roy, so you can get in like that. Don't squeeze up on me like that. He's rubbing his tools on you. He's rubbing himself on me. He's done it on purpose as well. It's really weird.